Have you ever slipped on a wet floor? Or tried to stop your bike going downhill? What if I told you that there's an invisible force that helps you walk, ride, drive, and even keep your balance? But it can also make things overheat or wear out. That mysterious force is called friction. And today, we'll explore what friction is, its types, its effects, and why life without it would be a slippery disaster. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to Describe friction Identify types and factors affecting friction Explain advantages, disadvantages, and how to reduce slash increase friction Last time, we learned about contact forces Pushes and pulls that happen when two objects touch Let's play a quick game I'll say a statement, and you decide if it's a deal or no deal Contact forces act between two objects not in contact. Correct. It's no deal. Applied force and tension are types of contact forces. You're right. It's deal. Friction causes objects in motion to slow down. Yes, it's deal. Awesome. That last one gives us a clue. Friction is what slows things down. Friction is a force that happens when two surfaces rub against each other. It always acts opposite the direction of motion. Imagine pushing a box across the floor. The floor pushes back. That's friction. Without it, we couldn't walk, write, or even hold things in our hands. When I hold this pen, friction keeps it from slipping. See? Useful, right? Now, not all friction is the same. Let's explore the four types of friction. One, static friction. The force that keeps an object still. Like a trash bin that doesn't move even when you start to push. Two, sliding friction. When objects slide past each other. Like pushing a heavy box on the floor. Three, rolling friction. When an object rolls over a surface. Like a soccer ball rolling on grass, easier to move. 4. Fluid friction. When an object moves through air or liquid. Like a skydiver falling through air, or a swimmer moving through water. So, which type of friction helps cars move safely on the road? Yes, static and rolling friction. They give traction. Ever wonder why some surfaces are slippery and others are sticky? That's because friction depends on three things. One, surface texture. Rough surfaces have more friction, smooth surfaces have less. Two, normal force, weight. The heavier the object, the more friction. Three, surface area. The larger the contact area, the greater the friction. So, a basketball on a polished floor has less friction but on rough pavement, much more. Friction can be your best friend or your biggest enemy. Advantages. Helps us walk and stop cars safely. Produces heat to keep us warm. Lets us grip things tightly. Disadvantages. Causes wear and tear on machines. Overheats engines. Increases energy use in vehicles. So, in short, friction keeps us safe but too much of it can damage machines. Depending on the situation, we may need to increase or reduce friction. To increase friction, use rubber shoes. Make surfaces rougher. Add more weight to increase grip. To reduce friction, apply lubricants like oil or grease. Use wheels or ball bearings. Polish or streamline surfaces. So the next time you oil your bike chain, you're actually reducing friction. Let's reflect. Think about this. Why is it dangerous to play basketball on a wet court? Right. Because less friction means you might slip. Friction keeps you safe. 
I want you to write in your science notebook. Friction is essential in our daily lives because and complete that sentence. So, what did we learn today? Friction helps us move, stop, and stay safe. But too much friction can cause problems. Whether you're walking, riding, or playing, friction is always at work. If you enjoyed this lesson, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Study Buddy PH. See you next time for more fun and science field lessons. With the help of your teacher, do the following activity.